The movie opens with a short documentary about the legendary players of Rucker Park, a famous basketball court in Harlem. We are introduced to Uncle Drew, considered by many as one of the greatest basketball players ever. Famous names like Steve Nash, Joe Hammond, and Dikembe Mutombo praise his incredible skills. In fact, Jerry West suggests that Uncle Drew should be on the NBA logo instead of himself. As the documentary progresses, it is revealed that Uncle Drew used to play with his childhood friends and even won the first Rucker Classic Tournament in 1968. However, things took a bad turn when he got involved with one of his teammates' girlfriends, causing the team to break up. Nobody wanted to see Uncle Drew become Daddy Drew. After that incident, Uncle Drew disappeared mysteriously, and nobody has seen him play since. The story then shifts to the present, where Dax Winslow, a young basketball coach, is determined to build a winning team for the Rucker Classic Tournament. Although he has many talented players, they all heavily rely on a guy named Casper to score points. Dax knows that Casper is the star player, so he regularly checks in with him to ensure he's happy and satisfied. One day, Dax's childhood rival, Mookie, pays him a visit and mocks his plan to win the championship. Mookie proudly displays his tattoos, which represent the seven out of nine Rucker classics he has won. Despite having a strong team this year, Dax worries that Mookie might try to recruit his players. After the guy leaves, Dax approaches his star player and asks if there's anything he needs. Casper, aware that Dax works at a shoe store, demands a new pair of expensive Jordans. However, Dax ignores his request, saying they have not arrived at the shop yet. Later that night, Dax has a recurring dream that takes him back to his difficult childhood when he lived alone in an orphanage longing to be adopted. I can't believe this documentary figured out how to film dreams. In his loneliness, he found solace and passion in basketball. He had always been a winner, until middle school when Mookie blocked his shot, leading to a devastating loss. This incident shattered the respect he had earned, and he stopped playing basketball indefinitely. Presently, Dax lives with his girlfriend Jess, who supports him financially in the hopes that he will one day buy her an expensive car. <laughs> In the next scene, Casper and other teammates visit Dax at his workplace, hoping he can buy them shoes. Dax tries to wriggle his way out of the situation once again, but the guys won't let him. In the end, he buys all of them, a pair each, costing him a thousand dollars. Unfortunately, all his hard work goes in vain, as the very next day, Casper and the others betray him and accept Mookie as their new coach. Brutal. They did it all for the Mookie. Angry and hurt, Dax demands the shoes back from his disciples, but they all refuse Fuse. The following day, a video of Dax desperately holding onto a player's leg to retrieve the shoes goes viral online. Filled with shame and disgrace, Jess kicks him out of her apartment, ending their relationship. Is this real? This leaves the poor guy in a desperate state, but he still visits different basketball courts, hoping that he can recruit some players. Unfortunately, despite his best efforts, all the guys reject him due to the fact that he has never won any tournament. During one court visit, Dax overhears an elderly man criticizing the young player's poor performance. This enrages the players, and they challenge him to a match, believing that he has zero ball knowledge. But to their surprise, the old man scores basket after basket, teaching them about their mistakes. Dax, who observes everything from nearby, is greatly impressed, and it is at this moment that he discovers the old man's identity. He is none other than the legendary basketball player, Sugar Man. I mean, Uncle Drew. After the game, Dax approaches Uncle Drew and asks him to join his team. Initially, the old man refuses, saying he is weak and diseased, but when Dax reveals that they'll be participating in the Rockers Classic, he agrees. Uncle Drew puts forth a condition, though. He will only play with his former squad. After Dax agrees, they embark on a road trip to DC, aiming to bring back the old team. In the morning, they pull over near a church to meet one of the players named Preacher. Turns out he has retired from basketball and become a literal preacher. When the guys enter the church, they find him baptizing a baby. His methods are unconventional, as he handles the infant <laughs> like a basketball. Concerned, Dax gets up from his seat and chastises Preacher, calling him unprofessional. But this only disrupts the ceremony, and Dax ends up getting baptized instead. Afterward, Uncle Drew meets Preacher and reveals their plan to reunite their old team. Preacher appears happy about it, but his wife strongly opposes his return to playing. Despite the disagreement, Preacher secretly sneaks into Drew's van as they prepare to leave. His wife, Betty Lou, chases after them in her own van, but they manage to escape by running a red light. Later, they stop at a gas station to refill and freshen up. Dax tries to ask Drew about why their team stopped playing after 68, but he doesn't receive a clear answer. Meanwhile, Preacher asks Drew if he has resolved the issue.
issues with their former teammate, Big Fella. However, Drew dismisses his concerns, believing that a basketball game will solve everything. Next, they visit an arcade where Light, a former teammate who is visually impaired, is playing e-basketball. He doesn't recognize the men approaching him, but promptly accepts their invitation when they share their plan. After this, the group heads to a nursing facility to find Boots, who hasn't been able to walk for years. Seeing him, Dax becomes worried and claims that they will never win the tournament with players like this. However, Drew is confident in his team. To check his abilities, Drew tosses a ball towards Boots, and the wheelchair-bound guy effortlessly catches it, demonstrating his sharp reflexes and instincts. Okay, this isn't real. This finally convinces Dax, and so he recruits Boots into his team. The old man's beautiful granddaughter, Maya, also decides to accompany them to ensure his well-being. The final member, Big Fella, hasn't spoken to Drew since their team disbanded. He now works as a karate instructor in a dojo. As soon as Drew approaches him, Big Fella lays the smack down on his ass out of anger. But despite their strained relationship, he decides to join the group for the sake of his other friends. With the complete team assembled, they head back to Harlem. They are once again chased by Betty Lou, but they manage to drive past her. At a gas station, Dax realizes he doesn't have money for petrol to reach Harlem. He spots a female basketball team and approaches their coach, making a $100 bet against his team. Unfortunately, the girls outperform the older guys, leading the scoreboard by a landslide. During the break, Dax gives an inspirational pep talk and tells his team that they have to win this game anyhow because of the bet he made. He also wants them to focus on their teamwork and agility. Hearing this, the oldies get riled up and decide to give it their best. But as soon as the second half starts, the girls again dominate and emerge victorious. Poor Dax now has to pay $100 to the opposition coach when he doesn't even have the money to to fill gas. Fortunately, the old guys pool their money and help him settle the debt. They also provide Dax with the gas money, much to his delight. Upon their arrival in Harlem, the team visits their old basketball court, where they used to practice when they were younger. This brings back an avalanche of memories, causing the old guys to become emotional. Then, Drew opens his bag and reveals that he has brought gifts for each team member. Light receives advanced goggles to give him clear vision. Boots gets a pair of Converse shoes that allow him to stand for the first time time in years. Preacher receives a crucifix necklace, and Big Fella receives their first kids tournament trophy. While everyone is happy with their gifts, Big Fella stomps on the trophy, refusing to forgive Drew for his past actions. Later, Dax goes to Jess's apartment and finds out that she has moved on and is now with his nemesis, Mookie. This leaves him angry and devastated, but he promises to teach them a lesson soon. After a few days, the tournament begins and the team has a good start after winning their first game. However, in the second game, they give up a big lead and end up losing due to the conflict between Big Fella and Drew. Dax tries his best to reconcile the two, but to no avail. The following day, as Big Fella is paying his respects at his late wife's grave, Drew coincidentally arrives there. They awkwardly greet each other and finally open up about their past. It is revealed that after an important match, Drew got so drunk that he ended up sleeping with Big Fella's wife. It was a mistake that he still regrets to this day. Drew then looks big fella in the eye and apologizes for the incident, saying he would have never done it if he weren't intoxicated. This finally gives big fella the closure he was looking for, so he forgives his friend immediately. Now, with the entire team on the same page, they start winning game after game. They celebrate their victories by visiting nightclubs, where they drink a lot of booze and dance like crazy. As the days pass, Dax and Maya also become close and eventually start dating. After winning several games, Dax's team reaches the semifinals. If they win, they will face Mookie's team in the finals. However, during the first half of the game, disaster strikes as Big Fella suffers a massive heart attack and collapses to the ground. He is immediately rushed to the hospital and saved, but the doctors reveal that he can never play again. Now, with a major player out, Dax starts looking for a replacement. Since no one is interested in joining the oldies, he is forced to recruit Preacher's wife, Betty Lou. The team somehow wins the semifinal, and now Dax is set to face off against his old nephew. Nemesis, Mookie. The scene then cuts to the finals day, where both teams are seen preparing for the game. On one hand, the oldies want to win the championship and retire peacefully, while on the other hand, the young guns led by Casper want to make a statement. Soon, the game begins, and Mookie's team swiftly takes the lead, using their physicality and superior tactics. The old guys struggle to keep up with the pace and energy. However, after a while, they figure out the opposition's game plan and start playing better. The oldies hit several impressive baskets and build up the score, but 
At a crucial point of the game, Light and Casper collide into the post, rendering both of them injured. As they are forced out of the game, tension rises between the team coaches. After a lot of thinking, Mookie gets into the court himself, but Dax is hesitant as he fears being humiliated again. He believes he is not a good player at all. However, when Uncle Drew and the others motivate him, Dax decides to go for it. After the game resumes, Mookie wastes no time and scores his first basket, implying that he's still the pro he once was. With only eight seconds left on the clock, Dax gets a golden chance to score the winning basket, but hesitates when he gets flashbacks of the same incident. Hence, he calls for a timeout. During the break, his team motivates him once again, saying he should do it for the team as well as himself. Dax also remembers that he has to teach his ex-girlfriend Jesse a lesson, so he immediately gets riled up. He then steps under the court with renewed energy, promising to give his best. Lo and behold, Dax manages to make the game-winning shot, finally beating Mook. Seeing the game end in a nail-biting finish, the crowd goes into a state of frenzy and praises him for his final shot. Even an impressed Mookie congratulates Dax and shows him respect for the first time ever. After their win, they all visit Big Fella in the hospital, and the prize money is used for his treatment. The movie ends with a news report on ESPN, portraying how Dax transformed from being a joke with his old team to being a hero of the finals. Was it real? Was that real? Yeah. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.